Good evening, good evening, Restoration of the Breach Without Borders, and welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study. We are so happy to have you with us here tonight. Tonight, we are on to again with my beautiful sister, Sister Melissa Bartley Ankle. And, good night, uh, everyone. Good night, good night, good night. And both of us are going to try and hold on the floor tonight again. <laughs> We pray that the Holy Spirit will rest upon us tonight as we purpose to share the word as the Lord downloads it, downloads it in our spirit. So before we start, we just want to invite you once again to not be selfish. Please share, like, and comment. And we want you to participate and be a part of this study because tonight is going to be, yes, it's going to be a nice day. Nice discussion, right, Melissa? There you go. <laughs> yes, tonight our topic is don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you see. Glory to God. So before, let us pray. Father, we thank you, mighty God, for another opportunity to be here this evening to share the word of God with your people. Father, Lord, we pray even now, God, that you will sit upon us, Holy Spirit. Let us decrease and you increase. Lord, touch our mouth and fill it with your words, oh God. Cover the airways, cover every device. Cover all those that are watching now and those that will watch in the future. Father, in everything, mighty God, we pray that you will be in the center of this Bible study tonight. And Father, we give you the glory, give you the honor, we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's a God. Sister Melissa, you're taking the ship today. <laughs> so we're going to jump right into it. And last week we were using the Bible on screen and we're going to purpose to do that tonight again. So sis, which scripture verse are we starting with tonight? Well, as the theme suggests, we're not moved by what we see. We're going to be looking at the promise that the Lord made to the children of Israel. And we want to look at the journey of the children of Israel going into the promised land. But even before we get to the promised land, we're going to look at the very initial promise mm -hmm. that God made to Abraham. And that's Genesis chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1. You could just go ahead and read it, sis, while I... All right, so it page. says, and I'm reading from the King James Version. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, mm -hmm. and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. No, I'm reminding us of our theme. We're not moved by what we see. Now, based on the promise when the Lord told Abraham to leave his country mm -hmm. and to go into a land that he knew, he knew not, at this time, Abraham was without a child. He was childless. So that was his reality. That was mm -hmm. what he was seeing. Mm -hmm. But God said, leave your hometown. Follow my leading. And I will make of thee a great nation. No, that takes a whole lot of faith. It's not like he had a child. So he could say, okay, I understand where God is going. He was without a child. And God was saying to him, God did not say, I'm, give, I'm going to give you a child. God said, I'm yes. going to make of you a great nation. Yes. So can yes. you imagine? And, and Yes, go ahead, sis. No, continue, continue. Right. So I, I'm here thinking that that must have taken a lot of faith. And obedience on Abraham's Abraham at this point on his part because if he were looking at the natural mm -hmm. he would not have 
left his hometown one and he would not have believed that he was going to be a great nation because as we said earlier he was without a child yes and then yes do you have um anything to say on this sister hurry and i want to bring it to us put it in our everyday you know many times the lord will give us a promise we hear a word from god god says your god said to thank him for the host God says, <laughs> you are going to travel the world and preach the gospel. And um, yeah. you live in a, you, first of all, you have a job and uh, you won't even, you don't even see yourself being qualified for the mortgage, but yet still God said, thank him for the house. You don't yeah. see where the deposit's going to come from. You possibly a single mother, a single father, or if you're married, you don't see it. Oh, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The Lord tells you that you're going to be a doctor. You can't even find the first dime to go to university. But yet still God is telling you you're going to university. So many times the reality is, is that you don't see how it's going to happen. That's your reality. And tonight we want to encourage you with this topic. Don't be moved by what you see. Yes, you are, the reality is the reality, but see your reality through the lenses of God. Right, Melissa? Right. But you know what I love about God? And most when we look through the Bible, most times, this is what God does. He shows us the very end. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then he takes us back and walks us through the process as he uses that as a means of cheering on our faith and our obedience because honestly well while, while we're going through walking to get to the promise it can be frustrating yes we can get depressed sometimes yes. we even wonder did god really tell me to do this yes exactly was i hearing correctly mm -hmm. but each time we can remind god god you told me that I'm going to go to school. So even mm -hmm. though I'm not seeing the money, I have started. I don't see the money. You told me that I'm going to get this degree. God, you told me that I'm going to own my own home. Even yes. though I just went to NHT and they turned me down. You told me. So we, yes. he, he, he has a way of giving us a word that we can give back to him. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I was having a conversation with a young lady. I'm, I hope I can remember how she said it. She said, when God speaks, I'm going to put it in my own word. But basically what she was saying that whenever God speaks, it's always not what we expected. It's not the norm. It goes against everything that we believe when God speaks to us at times. Right. He that speaks so. to us in a way that only if you really, I don't want to say only if you have a relationship, but he always, when God speaks, it it, 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 it boggles the mind that time. It's like, what, God? What? <laughs> As Sister Ramon would say, you'd have, you have to have a sort of grace. To believe, yes. yeah, the great saying, yes, and, what God is saying. So, yes, yeah, so this is where now we start off where God made the promise. He said, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Continue, Melissa. But you know, even as God made that promise to, to mm -hmm. Abraham, and I'm thinking um, through the mind, Abraham's eyes. He would have gotten excited. Oh my God, you're going to do this for me, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we jump over to chapter 15. And, and as if God, in a sense, would burst his bubble. Chapter 15 and verse 13 of Genesis. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land 
that is not there. So remember, God gave him a promise and God mm -hmm. said to him, you're going to be a father of a great nation. And he would have gotten excited about the word. Mm -hmm. But here God is telling him, this very word is going to be tried. Your seed is going to be going to a strange land. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're going to serve in that land. Not one day, not one week, not a year, but 400 years. My God. Are you there, Melissa? Okay, I'll continue. So here we see God giving the promise. We saw it earlier in Genesis chapter, in the earlier part of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. We see here God promising, promising um, Abraham that he's going to be the father of many nations. And then now we see here God saying that, yes, you're going to be the father of many nations, but there's going to be issues. They're going to face challenges. We just lost Melissa, but she's, she will be back soon. So I'll do my best to continue without her. And as I read the scripture, I want to encourage us that even though God will give us a word. When he gives us the, the nice word, the word that we want to hear, yes, you're going to get the host. Yes, you're going to get the husband. But also the word will come with challenges. I, I, I remember right before COVID, a couple of months before COVID came, and, you know, just in your prior time, I heard the Lord said it's going to get worse before it get better. So sometimes when the Lord is giving us a promise, the promise will come with challenges. The promise will come with heartache. It will come with rejection. It will come with difficult times. And this is where we see um, Moses, um, God telling Abraham, he said, now, certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And this is where God is speaking to the Israelites being slaves in Egypt. And they will serve them and they will, will afflict them 400 years. And, and and that's exactly what happened. They were slaves in Egypt for 400 years. So when God gives us a promise, yes, God desires us to have the best thing. God desires for us to have the most. He, he, he did, God desires for us to prosper and be in good health, as his word says. But sometimes the word, we have to go through hills. We have to go through valleys for the before we can get the the the. Then as, as, the, as you would say, the nice part of the promise. Sometimes you have to go through some, some difficult times, some challenging times. As he said, though sometimes it will get worse before it get better. And this is what the Lord was showing um, Abraham right here. And Melissa is back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good job. You are doing a good job. Sis. Yes. So yes. I was just, you know, trying to expound on what was said here that even though God will give us the nice word, the word that we want to hear, the prosperity, the 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 the, the niceness, right. sometimes it will come with challenges to get mm -hmm. to the, the 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 package, what's in the package. You, you have to go through stripping. You have to go through, thank you, Holy Spirit. So just like when you have a gift right. and it comes in this nice, nice you ever, have you ever gotten a gift yet, Melissa? And it's so nicely wrapped that you don't want to rip it apart. All the but time. in order to get to what is in the, the in, is in the gift, you right. have to pull, you have to rip the paper, you have to, you know, you have to do some shredding. You have to destroy the, the, yeah. the wrapping of the gift to see what's in it. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so is it at times, that's what will happen to us. God has to put us through, he has to put us through some stripping, some stretching. It's, yeah. it's, it's the same with a diamond. This beautiful yeah. ring. When you get that, when you go to the store and you see the diamond in the in the in the showcase, it didn't just come from the dirt, from the earth like that. Exactly. It had to go through processing and you know shaping and chipping. Yeah, you get me. <laughs> yes, but but you know, Sister Hillary, as this, uh, I'm looking at the word. I remember in 2016, the Lord literally came to me and Damon and said, "It's time." It's time to get pregnant. And you know, you're, 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 as, as a young couple, you're excited. You get excited about the fact that God has said to you, it's time to get pregnant. And we're going. I tell you, my pregnancy was beautiful at first. I didn't experience any of the things that mothers, you know, pregnant mothers experience. And there came a point in time when I got so sick. I literally thought that I was going to die. But mm -hmm. I had to hold on to the word that God said that you're, you're going to have a child. So in those days when you feel as if God, I'm, I'm going, everything in you is telling you that you're going yes. to die. Yes. What is the promise that God has given? So the in-between, it's going to get rough. Yes. But hold on to the promise that God has given that you're going to be Abraham, you're going to be a great nation. Mm -hmm. And so he would have passed that down to his generation. So even while they're in slavery, somebody would have remembered that God, you told my forefather that I'm going to be a great nation. Even while I was going through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I would have reminded God, God, you told us that this child is going to come forth and so you know we 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 skip on down to yes we skip on down to exodus chapter 12 and god is such a strategic god is a god that holds his promise yes he reminds us that he's not a man that he should lie whatever he says he's gonna bring it to pass so yes. he told abraham your seed is going to be in this land for this amount of years. And on the very day of when the, the clock would have struck 12 and the time changed, the clock yes. and the day is a new day, God said it's time. And so it's important that we hold on to the word and trust God's time. It said, no, the sojourning of Israel, children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years, not 431 or 31 and a half. At the appointed time, they had to go. So we are, we are holding on and everything is saying, give up. At the appointed time, God is going to come through. Yes. And he wants us to take him at his word. He says he honors his word above his above very his name. name. Yes, yes. So there's and one he, thing. He, he says um, before heaven and earth pass, before the little dot of the I comes off or off the J, heaven and earth will have to pass before that happened that is the confidence we have tonight that the promise god has given unto us must come to pass must must come to pass mm -hmm. god honors his word above his name exactly so no matter what you see happening once you know that god has given you that word yes you stand on that word you hold on to that word don't be moved by what you see. Exactly. Don't be moved by the naysayers. Don't be moved by by the, your unbelief. Exactly. Believe in words. Stand on the word of God. I, I think Sister Melissa was sharing recently, and she said, past, uh, the pastor said that if God says this podium is going to change color, you immediately, mm -hmm. God is going to change color immediately 
immediately it will change color because that is the God that we serve. We can stand on the promises of God. We can exactly. believe. There's a preacher that says, um, he, he says that God has the ability and God has the integrity. integrity. The ability to do it and he has the integrity that he will come through on it. God. You know, Melissa may have the integrity. She might say, Hillary, I truly, really want to help you. She has the integrity and I know that she will do it because of the person that she is. But mm -hmm. she may not have the ability. God has both the integrity and the ability so you can stand on his word that when he gives it to you, it must come to pass. Yes, but you, you know, sis, are we as we look at if we know the story of the children of Israel in Egypt, and we see how Pharaoh would have tried everything, everything in his power to ensure that the children of Israel stayed. But when the time came, it doesn't matter all the things that Pharaoh did, he had to relent. Mm -hmm. And that is to remind us, it doesn't matter what the enemy is trying, all the ammunition, all the strategies that the enemy is going to bring out, all the fire is putting in. And sometimes, trust me, the fire that the enemy comes with looks very real. And if we're mm -hmm. not careful, our very hearts will tremble. But even in the face of those trials, God is saying to us, Stand on my promise. Stand on the word that I have given unto you. Amen. 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 So now we're going to journey over to Numbers chapter 13. Yes. Numbers so chapter they, 13. So they would have left, um, come out of slavery. Mm -hmm. And now they're onto the promised land that God did say to Abraham. I'm going to give your seed this land. They're on their way to the land. Go ahead, Melissa. So um, Numbers 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, Shall he send a man, everyone a ruler among them? So we are seeing here that God, God is so awesome mm -hmm. that he gave them a promise and he never left them along the way. He kept on going with them, kept God kept on, kept on going, kept on going with the Israelites. He yes. never left them. You're yes. there, Melissa? You, yes. you got frozen a while ago. Okay. You're hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. So he said, he, he said to them, send thou men that they may search out the land. Now we may be wondering why God gave them the word though. Why would God say to them, yeah. send men, send spies? To search out the land which I give, we said, which I give unto the children of Israel. I have given you this gift. So come into partnership with me. Mm -hmm. God wants us to work with Him in going to the promise. The things that we God has given unto us, He wants us to come into agreement with him of every tribe of their fathers god could have said send one person why mm -hmm. from every tribe of their fathers this was a nation a family thing so everybody god wanted, god wanted witnesses exactly everybody must get involved yes this is your blessing. Come into partnership with the blessing, yes. man. You have to participate in it. Participate in your blessing. Yes, yes. That you shall I'll... send. Every... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say God will. God is not gonna do for us what He has given us the ability to do. Right. 
So God is saying, okay, I am taking you here. The promised land is next door. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to go get each one of your neighbors, each one from each household. Come now. I'm sending you out to scout out the land, to make preparation. So when you go there, you know what you are up against. He's yes. preparing you for the blessing. My God. God mm -hmm. doesn't just give you stuff like that. Right. You know, sometimes sometimes we want it right away. I think I heard Rev um, sharing the other day. He said, we don't want to, to stay at level, at, at, at step one. We want to jump away all the way to step seven. When it takes, it's a process we are going through. You have to start at level one, level two, level three, and it's gradual. Right. But sometimes we don't want that. We want God to tell us to tell us from step one, and we just jump right to step seven. And mm -hmm. sometimes we are not prepared for what is up there at, 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 at level seven because it requires us to grow. We have right. to get wisdom. We have to we have to get understanding. It mm -hmm. is it it would be like God just decides that God gave you some gift and you have, you know, he used you in a per particular situation. And then, no, you just believe, say, yes, I am gifted. I'm, I know it all. I'm talented. And you left your church. Now I'm going to start your own ministry because of one, God used you in a particular way, not waiting to see and grow learn from your leaders learn from who the people that god has placed around you exactly. sometimes we jump ahead of god and then exactly. we sabotage our own our own blessings mm -hmm. right exactly and he says everyone a leader among them so god was sending the leader from the different tribes yes. the leader would have gone out the leaders would have gone out come back with the report mm -hmm. and Give it to the children. God could have said, Moses, you go and come back and tell the people. Mm -hmm. So we realize that in the church, the work is not just for the pastor. The leaders, the other leaders, the deacons, the evangelists, the missionaries, we, we must get involved. Yes. And be in charge of our different groups. Yes. So there are things that we need not bog down the pastor with. Mm -hmm. The different leaders should be responsible yes. to go out, do get the, 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 the report, and come back and share it with the people. Yes. And, and also, Melissa, there are times when the lord will designate certain responsibility to certain individuals exactly you know a leader has to be a leader exactly uh, 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 sometimes you must follow the leading of your leader mm -hmm. and this is why it's also very important that we allow god to choose our leaders exactly. and it's not based on their gifting and it's not based on their their, their qualifications. And I, I was listening to a preaching on Sunday and the, the preacher said that no longer do we seek the Lord for, for, for we seek the Holy Spirit to guide us to choose individuals to put on, on committees to lead, mm -hmm. to lead, to lead um, services or to, 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 to be bishops and pastors. Mm -hmm. We just go by qualifications. Right. We just go by the, their following our, you know, we don't seek the Holy Spirit to say, okay, God, who should I choose to, to, to minister this week? Who should I choose to, to, to head this department? Right. We go by favorism. We go by qualifications. And this is where we see now God was saying, pick the leaders. Exactly. Pick leaders. And he gave um, Moses that responsibility to do so because right. Moses was chosen by God to lead them from out of Egypt. Exactly. And so this would have been the training ground now for yeah. these um, sub-leaders. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you are going on this assignment 
And it depends on how you deal with this assignment. You are showing God whether or not you are ready for the next level. Because we must yes. understand that Moses is not going to be around forever. Yes. How are you preparing yourself, strategically positioning yourself to ensure that when Moses is about to depart, you are ready to step into Moses' shoes? And a lot of times we don't want to be prepared. No, no. We just you know want what? to we just want to say, okay, Moses, it's your time to go now. And we are forcing Moses out of the sea. Yes. Actually, yes, yes. we are not ready to step into Moses' seat because we did not take the training that Moses yes, was offering. Yes, yes. We don't have the patience. Moses is too old-fashioned. Exactly. <laughs> Moses needs to get with the time. And instead of we learn from Moses, mm -hmm. we learn from Moses. We, we try to push Moses aside. Exactly. So in verse 3, it continues and it says, well, and, Mos and Moses, by the commandment, so we see here, Moses was careful that he did not give the leaders his word. And it's important that we follow the leader who is hearing from God. Yes. And we see a lot of persons, a lot of leaders doesn't want to take the time out to spend quality time with God, that they can hear exactly what God is saying for the people. Mm -hmm. yes. So we see, we, we, we see what is happening these days is that a lot of leaders, they're just going on based off flesh, based off what they think the people Topical. want to hear. Yes, the trending, but, the trending exactly. topic. But Moses yes. said, this is what God is saying to you. The, and the commandment of the Lord sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. So here God gave them a directive, you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to go into the land. And this is the way that you're going to take. So God was preparing them. That yes, I've given you the land, but you're going to go in and you're going to see the particular way that you should take strategies. Mm -hmm. And as sure enough, God, we must arm ourselves with strategies because the enemy has strategies. Yes. And yes. God wants us to be fully prepared. Yes, God has told you that you're going to get the job. But at the same time, have you gone ahead to read up on the com company, the organization that you're going to join? Have you read what the, the culture of the organization is all about? When you go into the interview and the interviewer says, tell me a little more. Tell me a little. What do you know about the company? You're there. You, you sit there looking. First of all, start off. Do you even have a resume? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have you so, started have you started to look for a job exactly because sometimes we believe that when we get the word it's just gonna fall into our lap that god is gonna just do it you know everything for us and that's not how it works it's not, it's not it doesn't work like that and this is where we see god say yes you're going to the promised land but here i'm preparing the way for you mm -hmm. but before you guys go in I'm going to send my leaders in for them to for, for, to show you. So when you go in there, it's, it, 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 it's not a surprise. Exactly. You, you, surprise, you, know, you yes. know what you're... My leaders are going to go out, get the report, and they're going to come back. So you yes. know what it's all about. Yes. And we see here, we're going to skip a couple of verses ahead because in the next... The next couple of verses, it just speaks about, it gives the names of the leaders. Right. So we're going to jump down to. Uh, and, 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 you know, while you're jumping, Sister Hillary, we just want to point out again, God did not send the spies because, to say, all right, we didn't believe that God has given us the land. That's not why the spies went. We, they went 
in preparation for yes. to prepare their spirits for what they're about to get. So we're here at chapter 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, verse 17, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. So again, Moses gave them the direction. And yeah. see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell it therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, preparing them. Moses was preparing them for the land that they were going to go in, verse 19. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. So, and Melissa, pause, Melissa, pause there. Look oh, look at the detail. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the, the detail. Let's go back to verse 17. Look at the detail that Moses gave the spies. He didn't just go and he didn't just send them and say, okay, just go. First, he said to them, go up this way into the south. So he's giving them intricate details where to go. He said, go south and go up to the up to the mountains. So it goes to show that also as a leader, you must be able to follow instructions. Exactly. In detail, detailed instructions. Detailed instructions. Detailed instructions. And then too, remember, Moses would not have gone to this land as our theme is don't be moved by what you see. So yes. the mere fact that Moses would have gotten all of this detail, the way mm -hmm. that they should take, the mountains that they're going to go across, and, and as we continue, the, the, the people you're going to see whether or not these people are strong or if they're weak, yeah. if their cities are well fortified, that yeah. alone yes. should. Go ahead, Melissa. Oh, I was wondering if you're hearing me. Hearing That's why I stopped. <laughs> that alone should have reminded the leaders that God is in control. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that they would have gotten such detail before they went. Whatever they would have met upon in the land shouldn't be of any surprise to them. Yes. God because, was... God, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm saying I'm reading and then he said, I'm reading the New King's Version. And he said, and see what the land is like. Exactly. So God is saying, okay, just go. You know, observe. Exactly. Look around. Yes. Sometimes, you know, God sent us on a mission and God said, just watch. Don't say yes. anything. Just follow my lead. Follow my direction. Yes. Just go and just and, 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 and just blend in. Or yes. just go and, and be quiet. Just go and observe. And here we see, he said, see what the land is like. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going, you know, what are the people? Who dwells there? Are these good people? Are they bad people? Are they strong? Are they weak? Are they few or are they many? He was giving them detailed instruction. The, right. the, the instruction wasn't some ambiguous instructions like, oh my God, it's like, where do I go? You know, that's yeah. why they say God is not a God of confusion. Mm -hmm. God always give you. I heard a, a preacher said, when you are, when you are, when you, when you are in prayer, and you're hearing multiple, so many things coming at you. Just be quiet. Just stop. Mm -hmm. Because God don't, God not talking a confusion. Not at That's all. That's just the enemy trying to mess you up. And, mm -hmm. and here we see how God is speaking through Moses. Because this is God giving Moses direction. Saying, exactly. these are the people. They are strong or they are weak. They are few or they are many. Oh my God. God is giving them, God is preparing them exactly. for what is ahead. And sometimes people of God, this is what the Lord is, 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 is saying to us. He's saying, okay, Hillary, hold on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just learn some more. Stay under the leadership of exactly. your leader. Observe what he's doing. 
follow what he's doing. No, it is not time. Just wait. I know you're excited and you're passionate and you're full mm -hmm. of fire. But just, just wait a little bit. Just follow his direction. And this is what we see here. The Lord is giving Moses direction. Say, go, go scout out the land. Go see mm -hmm. what it's about. You know, because I'm you the promises, the promise is here. My God, the promise is here. But just hold on, just hold on. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Oh God. Oh, but, 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 but you see, Sister Hillary, you know, I, I thank you that we didn't jump over this. The purpose, you know. What was the purpose? What was the objective? The yeah. objective was getting to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And when God gives us a word, God is saying to us, his people, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you. We're hearing you. I'm not sure what happened to this thing. But God is saying to us that we ought to be strategic. What do I need to know in all of this? Yes. yes. What information should I gather? My God. We have to, before we get into battle, a lot of times we go into battle or we go, we're not prepared for what is to come. Or, 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 or the purpose or the gift that God has given unto us. We're not prepared. And so we don't get to enjoy the gift. We don't get yes. to enjoy the promised land because we really don't know what it is about. Yes. We're not prepared for it. So God was giving them information to prepare them. Yes. So God, 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 is, not gonna, God is not going to send you into... Oh, God, we lose Melissa again. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, cover Melissa's um, internet tonight in Jesus' name. I was just going to say that God is not going to send you into any battle unprepared. That's why he said, put on the whole arm of God. And here we see he's sending the spies in to scout out the land. And he's giving them directive. He said, whether the land that they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they are they they whether the cities they inhabit are like the camps or they are strongholds. So God is saying, pay attention. Just don't just don't just don't go there and just walk around and get caught up in the pleasantries. Go and study the land. Go and study the land. You know, God is sending them. Go and study the enemy. And sometimes we get so caught up in the frills and the trills and we miss, we miss what God is saying to us. We miss the directives of God. And God was saying to them, go and pay attention. Look for these things. Look for the, look and see whether they are weak, whether they are strong. So that when time comes now for them to cross over into the promised land, it is not a surprise. You know what to expect. Hallelujah. I will continue until Melissa, Melissa comes along. And then in chapter 20, he continues with the directive and he says, whether the land is rich or poor and whether there are forests that there are not, be of good courage, my God, be of good courage. There are times, sometimes God is giving us directions and he knows that we are going to face opposition. He knows that it is not easy. He knows that we're going to face rejection. He knows that we're going to face the naysayers. He knows that we're going to be fearful. But here we say, God is saying, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. And here we see God confirming again his promise because remember what he said my people shall go into the land flowing with milk and honey so we go back to the theme tonight don't be moved by what you see so god was encouraging using moses to encourage them and said even though you may go and you may see certain things be of good courage 
And now the time was, and, and it continues by saying, and now the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. Oh God, the timing is right. Look at when God was sending them to look, to go scout out the land. The right season. So that's why people of God, we have to be patient. We have to be patient and wait on God because God knows the right season. Look at when God was sending them to go spy out the land. Was He said, and, and the time was the season of the first ripe grapes. So God was sending them at the time when he knew that the fruit was, the land was fruitful. The land was fruitful. So therefore, they're not, they weren't going to go there. God is not sending them when the land was going through famine or in a, in a dry season. He was sending them when the land was fruitful. And this is why we have to pay attention to the directive of God. And follow the instructions of God. Because sometimes when we rely on them, that's why the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. We cannot lean on our own understanding. We have to follow God's timing. And here we see God telling them this is the right time to go and scout out the land. And we continue in... Verse 21, and it says, So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of, the wilderness of Zin unto Rahab, as men come to Hamath. So they went and they looked. They went and they were searching. And uh, I'm going to skip a few, skip a few lines. And in verse 22, we continue. We see where he says, and they went up through the south and they were obedient. They followed, you see? So it's important that we follow God's directive. We see, and they went, and the earlier in the earlier passage of scripture, you see where they followed the instruction. Moses said, go south. And they went up south. We see here, they followed the instruction. And here we see he's describing the type of people that are there. The Haman, the Sishites, the Talamites, the senders of Agnac were there. Now Hebrew was built seven years before the zone. So this is just a descriptive of the people in the, in the, in the, the promised land. And then in verse 23, it continues. It continues along that line. And they, and it says, and they came to the valley of Eskol, and there, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. So everything that the Lord said through Moses, this is what they were seeing. You go back, he said, it is the season of the first grape. So this is why people of God, when God give you a word, Hang on to that word. God's word must come to pass. God said it is the season of the first grip. And look, we see here in verse 23. And they and they are cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. So here we see they're following Moses' directive again. Moses said, bring back fruit. They also brought some of the pomegranates and fig. So not only did they, they get their grapes, there were other fruits. So when you, you see people of God, thank you, Holy Spirit. When we follow God's directive, God will give us brata. When we are obedient to God's directive, we'll get extra. Because God said they're going to get grape. It was a season of first grape. But look what else they got. They got pomegranates and they got figs. So God will even throw in a little surprise. Sometimes God is not going to tell us everything. Sometimes he'll hold back a little bit of information. Because if God give us everything and tell us everything, we're going to jump ahead of him. So here he said there was going to be grapes. But they go and they get pomegranates and figs. That's nice. That's extra. 
mighty God there that was extra. And then we continue in verse 24. And he said, the place was called the Valley of Eskal because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. My God. You say when you follow God's directive, people of God, you will leave a mark. When God sends you on a mission, when you follow God's directive, where you go, you will make a mark. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Because they followed the directive of what God did. It, the Bible said the place was the, the place was called the Valley of Eskal because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. My God, hallelujah. I don't know what happened to my and Melissa is gone. So people of God, I am walking through this passage of scripture with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Sister Randine. Thank you so much for your your words tonight. And Brandine writes, let me share it a bit. She says, wow, it is so important for us. Here's Melissa. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Brandine says, wow, it is so important for us not to be moved by what we see. Because if God had, had given a word, he will surely let it come to pass. God promised them that the lad... And it didn't matter who was occupying it. God promised them the land. And it didn't matter who was occupying it. That is so right, Randy. Don't be moved by what you see. And Melissa, when you were gone, I skipped ahead. And one of the things, I'll go back just to share with you a bit. Uh, let me find this. In chapter, let me go back. In chapter 23. In verse 23. Yeah, it says, and I was saying here, Melissa, and it says, and they came to the valley of Eskal, and they are cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. In the previous chapter, the Lord said, it was the first season of the grapes. Hmm. And I was saying there that you have to follow. God knows the right timing. Exactly. God knows the right season. Mm -hmm. And God said it is in the season of the grapes. And here we see exactly as what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. They were able to cut down one cluster of grapes. And I was saying also, Melissa, that God said they were going to get grapes. But look, they got pomegranates and they got figs. So when you follow God directly, when you're obedient to, to God... God will throw in extra that you didn't even expect. Always. So obedience comes with extra. Obedience <laughs> comes with extra. But if you notice though, sis, and they cut down from thence a branch, just a branch, you know, with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. Mm -hmm. So the land that God was taking them to, what God was showing them, you know, this was no ordinary land. No. This was just one cluster of grapes. Mm -hmm. And one person couldn't carry it. It was, My God. it was such a blessing. So what God is seeing, we have waited. Yes, the, 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 the in-between, long, rough, and tough. But when we get to the blessing, it will be so good that we will that you automatically have to share it. You need help. Oh God, we automatically forget about the burden and the rough road. It will be so mm -hmm. wonderful. It will be well worth it. Hallelujah. That's what God is saying. Yes, yes. So, so, so you you may be here and you're going through and you're saying, God, I. When is my time? God, I, I really don't understand what's happening. Just hold up, man. When you get to the promised land, man, it's going to be so sweet. The blessing yes. is going to be so wonderful that yes. you will automatically forget about all the things that you have gone through. And your blessing is going to be in such abundance that you will have no choice but to share it with others. No choice. Others will, uh, uh, others will benefit from your blessing. Yes. 
Others yes. will benefit from Ooh. you following God's directive. So your obedience is dependent on others to receive their blessings as well. Exactly. So your obedience to God is not just about you. Not just about you. Because it required so, two of them mm -hmm. to carry it, right? Yes. God, as they say, God gave it. Because remember, they were the leaders, you know. They were going to take back the evidence. This is Hallelujah. the evidence. This is the evidence. Oh God, that the land is good, that the land is fruitful. Yes, yes. This is the evidence. So what God is doing in our lives is that our life must testify to others that he's a good God. Amen. That it, Amen. it's well, it's worth the wait. Yes. That he's able to take care of us. So others yeah. looking on can say, boy, you got that from your promised land. You got mm -hmm. that from the, 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 the purpose, the thing that God said was he was going to give you. You got that from it. I'm mm -hmm. going to wait. Mm -hmm. So our blessing will give somebody a, 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 a lifeline to wait yes. out and yes. for longer, to take Jesus yes. at his word. Amen. And then I was at here at verse 24. And I, when I was reading this and I said, look at that. The place was called the Valley of the Eskal because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And I was saying, when God bless you, you will leave a mark. Ah. The blessings of God, it will not go unnoticed. You will so make a mark. So the blessing became a landmark. Oh became God. a landmark. My oh God. glory. Hallelujah. The blessing, the blessing became a landmark. The name of Jesus. So every uh -huh. time, every time um, the, 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 the valley of Eshkol was mentioned, they would have remembered the grapes. Yes. My God. So every time, and, and remember, the Lord said to them when they were crossing, I know I would have gone ahead, but when we read that the, when they, they get to, just before they get to the promised land and they were going to cross over into, the Lord says, set up a monument. So every time you see this monument, you're going to remember that this is what God has done for you. And that's what God wants us to do. What do yeah. we have to rem what do we have to remember that which God has done for us? Yes. And where we go, that's one one point. And where we go as children of God, are we leaving good memories? Mm. Are people saying, Wow, it was such a pleasure having Sister Hillary? You know, God really used her. You understand? Are people being blessed right. by you being around? Are people being yeah. are 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 you being are people being around you being influenced? Are people are people around you? Are you being <laughs> what do I want to say? Are people being better? Yes, because you are around. Are people benefiting from your blessings that yes. you will leave a mark, a good mark, a godly mark? You understand? So when we show up with our blessings, you know, that's what you're saying, Sister Hillary, is that people's yeah. lives must be transformed. Yes. People's because lives I'm must sure. be better because you are our own. Exactly. Because this place must have had a name before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it says, because of the blessing that was no in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. automatically, the blessing of the Lord change the atmosphere and it got a new name the my valley god. of eshkol my god can we allow the lord to use our blessings to, to transform a neighborhood to transform somebody's life for the better yes and it and it good and it speaks to also that when god is blessing us we cannot be selfish with it exactly you, you, your, your blessing must impact others. Mm -hmm. Bless, I am blessed to be a blessing. Exactly. It's not just, God's blessing is not just for us. 
it must impact life. Life must be right. transformed because God is because of our blessing that we are received, that we have received or are receiving from God. Yeah, you, you know, I didn't do it, but I'm going to I'm going to research what Eshkal means because I know it. Yes, I was thinking I was I was thinking about it. I am pretty sure it has some some awesome. deep meaning or awesome something. Meaning. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Maybe somebody could research it, Randy and our Stephanie, and just post it in the chat. What does that? What was the word Eshkal mean? As right. we continue. So we're gonna what time is it? We have 906, so we have a little bit of time left. So verse 25 says, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. My God. And you see again, what did the Lord say? What was the directive that Moses gave them? He said, 40 days. And 40 days. And I mean, it must have been such an awesome land that it mm -hmm. took them all of 40 days. My God. The blessing was so great, grand, massive, that it didn't take one night, a week, 40 days, over a month. And also, what we can learn from this as well is that when God gives you a time, Mm -hmm. And God said, you must stay X amount of time. Don't overstay your time. Yes. Be obedient to God's timing. Mm -hmm. If God says, go and spend a day, spend the day and come back. Exactly. If God says, spend extra time, spend the extra time and come back. We must be in alignment with God's timing. Because God knows why he says, come back this time. Or don't come back that time. Sometimes exactly. we get caught up in the pleasantries. Mm -hmm. We get caught up in the niceness. And then we forgot the directive of God. But here we see the spies. They, they, Moses says 40 days. And when the 40 days came, they returned after searching the land. So we must be obedient and follow the directions that we get from God. So that yeah. we don't mess up and we don't miss out on what God has in store for us. And, and you know, that happens a lot of time, um, sis, in our church services. The anointing is rich and we're mm -hmm. going and the Lord is saying, okay, stop. But because it's it, it feels so good to the flesh, mm -hmm. we keep on going on yeah. And, yeah. And, and mess up, mess up the anointing big time. Yeah. And it's the same when you're pr you're praying. As my dear mentor would say, when the Holy Spirit stop talking, you stop talking. Exactly. So when we're in prayer, sometimes because of the reaction mm -hmm. of, yes. of who is listening, yes. you know, the Holy Spirit don't pray a long time. Mm -hmm. We keep going on, we keep going on. And, you yes. know, because everybody has said, amen. Yes, my mm -hmm. sister, Holy Ghost. And Holy Ghost, don't stop. Holy, Holy Ghost stop talking like five minutes ago. Yes. But you're still going on and on because it's satisfying the flesh. Yeah. So not because you see the person seem as if it's the person is moving in the spirit. Don't be moved by that. Yes. Don't be moved by what you see. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. Don't be moved by what you see, people of God. So we continue in verse 26. I don't know if we're going to finish this tonight, but we'll try. So, and, and they went. Says, and mm -hmm. came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel. So the beautiful thing about it is that Moses sent them out and they came back to Moses. They yeah. did not run off in their little clique and say, we have excited news to share it though. They went back to the person in charge, authority. Yes. It's important that we follow authority. Mm -hmm. And to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kaddish, and brought back word unto them, and to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. They brought evidence. Yes. That this is what. And, you know, I one of the things I like as I'm reading this, and it, and and people of God, that's why it's important. That sometimes we don't skip, we don't rush. Because sometimes we read the Bible and we rush. 
And that's why Bible study is so important. You have to pay attention that they were obedient to the directive. Yes. They came back. They brought it back to their leader. And as you said, they didn't come and go share it with their family and tell mm -hmm. everybody else about Moses. They brought it back in front of, basically, they went and they shared it with the church. They shared it with Moses. They shared it with the leader. They shared it with the church. And they brought, and, and, and then they brought, they showed them the fruit. There's evidence. So mm -hmm. God said it, my God. When, <laughs> you see, people of God, we mo don't be moved by what you see. Exactly. Don't be moved by what you see. Because when God says it, God said the land is flowing with milk and honey. Fruit, I said, bring back the fruit of the land. And they went and they were obedient to the instructions of what God says. And here we see they come back with a proof that there was fruit of the land or fruit of the land. But, but you know, sis, God is so strategic that he would have placed the names of these places here. And it says, and they went, oh, bunch oh. of grapes. Yeah, thank you, Randine. Yeah, so Eskal is a Hebrew word for the bunch of grapes. Thank wow. you. So the, 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 the blessing named the place. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, and they and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. Kadesh was next door, in mm -hmm. essence, southern part of Canaan. So they were very close, standing on the brink of their breakthrough. So as we as we are going on to the next verse, I want to point that out to, to us, that they were standing on the brink of the promised land. Yes. Yes. And in verse 27, continue. Yes. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. So they're saying, yes, yes. The report that which God said, it's true. He wasn't mm -hmm. lying. He told us that we're going into a land that flows with milk and honey. And here I have the evidence because those weren't ordinary fruits that they brought back. They were extremely um, lush, plump, large grapes and pomegranates that they brought back. So they're saying, here is the evidence that God is not lying. God has not told you a lie. God's words always pro um, produce evidence. Always, always. God, I, oh God, that's what, that's what I want to say. God's words always produces. God's word doesn't come out, come back empty. It yeah, always produces. That's what he says. His word will not return unto him. Him, boy. No, our it boy. Must, it always come back with something. It must accomplish always. that which. So, yes. so, as, so as you said, um, sis, when you gave the example prior with pastor and the pulpit, even mm -hmm. if the land was dry, because God said it flows with milk and honey immediately, milk and honey had to milk start milk, flowing yeah. immediately so guess what you don't have any money and god has said to you go down to nht and apply for the home even if your name was not in the system <laughs> the mere fact that god has told you to go to nht and apply for the house when you go down there even if they tell you, I'm not seeing your name, you're not qualified, tell them to look again. And if they look again and they don't see it, okay, don't get upset, don't get flustered. All right, I'll come back in a few days. And we're going to go back to God and, 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 and we're going to reason with him. We're not going to get flustered. We're going to reason with him. Because our names must be in the database because God has said it. You know what, sis? The problem is that sometimes we are human, un, using human logics. Mm -hmm. 
exactly human understanding for we we have it in our mind that it's gonna work a certain way yes we it think that okay god, this is the, the way that we know it we think that god is gonna do it that way right well god is such a god of miracles signs and wonder Mm -hmm. That the way that you think that God is going to do it, that's not how he's going to do it. That's not how and this is why the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart wow. and lean not on your own oh, understanding. understanding. Oh, what ways are, the Bible said, our ways are not your ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. God don't think like how we think. Our thoughts are limited. Yes. And the way oh, we are expecting God to do it, that's not how he's going to do it. Exactly. And that's why, and that's why we get use your fingerprints to unlock. And that's why we get flustered. Right. You, you know, our biggest problem, our biggest problem is us. Our understanding, our understanding gets in the way all the time of what God wants to do in our lives. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Our human logics cannot yeah. measure up to the wisdom of God. We're trying to reason it out. And yes. who can reason out God, though? Mm -hmm. We can't. We can't. No one can. A, we can't fathom the mind of God. God that's why the Bible says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And we could have named a million and one scriptures tonight. We mm -hmm. just have to. And that's where it comes down, that we just have to trust and have faith in God. We just have to stand on the promises of God. Yeah. If, if God says it, it must come to pass. Come and to our topic tonight is don't be moved by what you see. Hell and powder house may be happening around you. Don't be moved by what you see. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to God. And we continue. And, you know, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this, it is, this is its fruit. Right. You think, you, think, <laughs> you think it would have stopped there? I know it would be a big celebration and everything is wonderful. Yeah, because remember, we in verse 26, you know, they're on the brink. It's yes. it, The reality is here. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And God gave them another evidence. The land is flowing. Mm -hmm. So that, that we have that to back it up. But well, let's mm -hmm. see what happens. Then, <laughs> then comes Satan. <laughs> then comes doubt. <laughs> then comes fear. Then comes the naysayers. Then comes, then comes, then comes, then comes. Oh, God. <laughs> then it oh. says, nevertheless, nevertheless, the people will be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, 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 Anak there. So they are, this is the reality. This is the reality. And this is what Moses gave them direction to go find out. Did you remember in the, the earlier yeah. passages? He said, What's go taking see. place? Yeah, whether they're strong, whether they're whether they're they're stronghold, whether they have camps, whether they are weak, whether they are strong, mm -hmm. and they did mention also they are just coming back to confirm now. So they said first, yes, they answered number one, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled. So that mm -hmm. means they 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 said, are they in camps? Or are they in stronghold? So that means they are in city. They are not in tents. Right. They have walls. They're, they live in houses. That's what I'm understanding from that. And they are very great. So they are not weak people. They are not weak people. And moreover, we saw the children of An Anak. And we know Anak, they were tall. That's where the, 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 the King Saul is from. He's a descendant of the Anak. So they are tall people. They are giants. But 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 sister Hillary, let's back mm -hmm. up a little. Yeah. Do you do you recognize the detail that they have given to the seemingly negative situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All they said, you know, the land is flowing with milk and honey, and this is the fruit. 
I don't see where they they, they describe the fruit as how they are describing the negative here. My God, and how many times we do that? So they're brushing. Oh yes, yes, it flows with milk and honey. Good, yes, and this is the fruit, but. And we dwell on that which the negative for so long. Yeah. We dwell it, on the problem. It yeah. blocks out the blessing. Yes, yes, yes. We magnify. They were magnifying the fact that the people be strong. They didn't say, yes, we see people. The people be strong. Okay, it's a city. The city is our world. Mm -hmm. and and not just walled but very great mm -hmm. automatically sis your leader is sharing this report with you of course you, your heart is going to fail you for fear this is your leader talking mm -hmm. and your leader is saying to you that boy the city walled in in essence he's saying i don't know that we can go up against them and the children of Anak, these are no ordinary people. Mm -hmm. The Anakims were no ordinary people. Mm -hmm. They right? were extra tall. Exactly. Yeah. So what? Where? So we have so two. We have two paths before us. Mm -hmm. Which one are we going to take? And it goes back to our topic. Don't be moved by what you see. So they were looking at the problem. Mm -hmm. And how many times we all do it. We focus on the bigness of our problem, the magnitude of our problems. But and we forget I, about the promise and we forget about the bigness of our God. We all yeah, do. It. We all do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because look at, all right, let's look at 29. They didn't stop there, you know. Okay, 29. They said the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites. The Jebusites and the, the, the Amorites. And the Amorites. All of the Ites there, man, the Canaanites. <laughs> and, they're just, and they're just naming out the enemy. Dwell in the mountains. And the yeah. Canaanites dwell by the sea. So basically they were saying, every step you take, there is the enemy is there. Yeah. Everywhere you turn. The enemy is there. Yes. Can you imagine? Yes. But let us, because we are running all that time. We literally have about seven minutes. And, but and, here. And Caleb, yes. so Caleb was bold enough to stand. Remember, 12 tribes, 12 spies went. Mm -hmm. And out of the 12, Caleb still the people before Moses and said let us go up at once he didn't even say let us think about it so before we even get oh to God. that before we even get to that caleb was so bold do we believe because sometimes we're 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 in the congregation you know and we're muttering under our breath god i believe i believe but the, if we really believe, we would have stood up in the congregation and say, this is what God is saying. This mm -hmm. is what we need to do. But we are not so convinced, so we stand with the crowd. But Caleb was so convinced. He stepped about out. He yes. stepped out. And our, our, our belief in God should allow us to step out and steal the naysayers. Still, the negative voices around us. The people, bold. the be spirit bold. of boldness, rest and upon us to speak. He was and stand not on the promises of God. Yeah, Caleb was not moved by what the others were saying. Yes. He knew what God said, and he was standing on that. So he stood, and he still the people. Let us go up at once right now. We're not going to delay. No, it's not the time to delay. It's mm -hmm. time to move and possess it. We're going in. We're going to take it. For we are well able to, to overcome. overcome. He, he believed 
in yes. himself. He believed in the God that was in them. And people of God, this is the mindset we have to have as we live in, in these last days. We have to believe in our in, in the God that lives in us. Because he said, we are able, yes. despite all of the giants, the Ittites and the Jebites, all of the ites, despite yes. the giants, despite the naysayers, despite what the government is saying, despite what the bank is saying, despite what your husband or your, or, or your wife is saying, despite, despite what your children behavior, despite, despite, regardless, mm -hmm. you are able to overcome. You yes. are able, that. you are able to overcome. You and are Caleb. able to be victorious. And, and Caleb had the facts. He had the facts. He went. Yes. He was one of them. So he's saying, I was there too. And I'm telling you, as Jamaicans would say, I'm not speaking with water in my mouth. I'm not telling you that which I have not seen. I'm not telling you that which, you know, God is saying to us tonight. We have seen that which he has done for, through us and in us. Can we stand up and testify about him Amen. can we tell somebody that i'm not asking you if god is able to heal you you're sick and the doctors have given you over but i'm not asking and not wondering if the doctor can heal i know the doctor yes. can heal i know that god can heal because he has done it for me i have seen him done it in my life yes that's what Caleb was saying. I was there. And I know that we are able to overcome. Not just to just go in and live. He wasn't saying we're going to go in and live. We are able to overcome that which is My in God. the land. I, yes. I love what Sister Randy says. Caleb was standing on the promises of God. Lord, help me to be a Caleb. My God. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me to be a Caleb tonight. Help me to believe that I will, I am able to overcome. overcome. Glory to God. And Stephanie said, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, to stand on your promise. Exactly. And people of God, we have run out of time. We didn't get to finish the complete chapter. But what a way to end tonight. We are able to overcome. And Sister Melissa, I am going to give you the last couple of minutes just to, to encourage someone tonight with that last statement. For we are able to overcome. Encourage somebody tonight as we close off. Why are we able to overcome? We're not able to overcome in our own strength. Yes. We're able to overcome because first and foremost, God has already done it. Yes. And he has already said it to us. I have given you the land. I have given you the blessing. He has already said to you, it is well. You're going to get through it even as we stand on the, 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 the brink of, of back to school, you know. He has already said to you, the children are going to go to school. You're going to step out September morning and you're going to get that job. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's going to work out. Because I have said it. And my words cannot fail. God's mm -hmm. word must come to pass. And that's, there are times, and it may be that, that's all you have to hold on to, that which God has said. But that's enough. That's all you need. That which God has said. He's going to back it up. Mm -hmm. He's going to ensure yes. that it comes as long as you remain faithful. Stand yes. on your watch. Yes. God is going to bring the word to pass in your life. All he requires.
requires is that continue to water it with faith. Am I saying that the, the fiery darts are not going to come and the devil is not going to show you all the negatives? When the negatives come, just as Tasha Cobb said, put a praise on it. Say, God, I thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the word, for bringing the word to pass in my life. Thank you for doing it for me. God, I believe. And like the man, help thou my unbelief, God. I know you're going to come through for me. Mm -hmm. And if you're here tonight and you're not, you have not yet accepted God and you're wondering, I don't know if this God will do it for me. I'm not serving him. He says he reigns on the just and the unjust. Just, he yes. will come through for you just the same. But he's saying, mm -hmm. if you have not yet given your life to him, now is the best opportunity. Give your life to him and watch him turn things around for your yes. good. Hold on to him. Wait on him. The promise may seem long in coming, but he will come through if you just hold out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Will come through if you just hold out. There's a scripture of passage I was looking for, and it just completely slipped my mind. <laughs> oh, my God. God is indeed faithful. Thank you so much, my dear sister. We pray that you are blessed and encouraged by the Bible study tonight. I surely am. Um, you know, I've read this passage of scripture numerous times and mm -hmm. it's like, I've never seen it like this before. Yeah. And people of God, I just want to point out two things. They I were, that. okay, my phone keep answering. They followed God directive, Moses' instruction. Moses yes. instructed them as the Lord instructed him. They went and they were obedient to the directives of Moses and they came back and exactly as how the Lord said it would be, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. But they came back with the neck and they saw, they came back and they saw negatives. They said, exactly, the giants, the, the Jebusites, all of the heights, they saw the negative, the, the stronghold, the challenges, and they were moved by what they saw. People of God, don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you see. As um, who said it this morning, just tonight? Who said it tonight? Um, Randine says, was it Randine who said, Lord, Lord, help me to be a Caleb. Let us all be like Caleb tonight and believe that you are able to overcome. And believe that doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the giants, the heights, all of the heights that's in front of you, you are able to overcome. If you don't believe nothing else that we said here tonight, believe to that you can overcome, not in your own strength. And this is what Caleb was telling them when you go further on in the scripture. And I really we encourage you tonight, go back and read it again. And that's the Holy Spirit just to open up your understanding to what was we, we, we spoke about tonight. Don't be moved by what you see. And we're going to end it here tonight. But before you go, we want to just remind you of a few programs that we have upcoming in a few over the weekend. So today is Thursday. So on Sunday morning, we have the word with Reverend Leo Stone Morrison at 7 a.m. Sunday morning, 8 a.m. So you get a nice word right before you go to church. Nice word, bright and early. And then after that, on Sunday, we have from this brilliant young lady, Dana K. Thomas, she's going to be sharing the spoken word. You have seen her on the alternative, and the Lord is going to give her a nice word to share with us on Sunday. And we also want to tell you and invite you, and we want you to share this flyer. We want you to blast it all over social media because we are on a mission to, to, to save, to win souls for Christ. It's our evangelistic crusade, and we have evangelistic evangelist Philip Cleary, 
he was here a couple of weeks ago and he shared this testimony of how God saved him. He was a gunman and now he's preaching the word of God and he's going to be on to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and win souls. And we have Pastor Musa Ling. He's no stranger to this platform. You have heard him here on numerous occasions. So these are the two speakers we have for that night, Saturday, September 10th. So mark it on your calendar and share the flyers. Share it with everybody. Save and unsave because God is going to speak to us through these two men of God on that night. So we encourage you to please share and mark it in your calendar to be here on that night. And um, yeah, and that's it. So we thank you once again. Melissa already prayed. We went over a bit, but you know, when you're studying the word of God, it's just sweet. It's just sweet. You know what? And <laughs> thank you, my dear sister, for being on tonight with us. You know, we had a bit of challenging, but nevertheless, we finished. Thank you once again for spending part of your Thursday night with us. So we see you again on Sunday morning for the word with Reverend Leah Stone Morrison. God bless you. Enjoy. Good night, everyone. Do have a great night. You're a night.